Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and we're going to take a look today together and examine the image quality from the new Zeiss Milvis 85mm f1.4. And so in this episode, we're going to interactively look at both the bokeh quality, we're going to look at the overall sharpness and resolution, and we're also just going to look at some real-world images and examine how it renders in real actual use. And so let's jump in together and take a look at what we find. We'll start with this out-of-camera JPEG, and, and so you'll see uh, this has received no post-processing, um, there's no compensation for vignette or anything. Uh, number one, you'll notice that the image is very contrasty, and uh, that is, to me, it's, it's very much a uh, characteristic of high-end uh, Zeiss glass, that it really has a ton of contrast. You'll see also that the overall drawing is nice, uh, not too many hard edges here on as we uh, kind of go out of focus. There is some vignette, as you can tell. We'll see that in some other images. And uh, here we've got uh, good sharpness on the subject itself. Now, in the second image, uh, we see here, this is just a kind of a wall decoration. So quickly we see it can create a lot of bokeh very quickly. I was several feet away from uh, my focus point, And the furthest point out here is only about two feet away. So uh, we see a few things here. Uh, number one, good sharpness, of course, on our subject. And most importantly, this is these are the kind of uh, reflective surfaces that can really create a lot of chromatic aberrations um, with uh, an inferior lens. So we see, number one, that there is next to no CA here, and this is a hotbed for it. Now, as we move to the out-of-focus plane, we will see that there is a tiny bit of green fringing, um, but this is actually a minimal amount for this kind of image, and, and so it does show that the, uh, the lens does very good with chromatic aberration control. Now we're going to go into a quick series here uh, that kind of show the shape of the aperture and uh, as well as how it renders out of focus um, bright highlights or bokeh circles as they're sometimes called. And so um, you'll maybe have seen me do some similar uh, images like this before. So number one, as we zoom in here and we take a look at the bokeh from the lens, this is really stunningly good in terms of not being busy in the, the least. There is almost no activity inside the uh, circle, which is, is very unusual. And, uh, and just a little bit of green fringing around the edge, but you'll note that there is no hard inner line. This right here tells you that this lens is going to produce very nice real-world bokeh. Then, of course, we look at our subject. Wow, I mean, at f1.4, that's our aperture here, we have a crazy amount of contrast and detail. And in this area, for example, where when we looked at the Canon uh, 50 millimeter f1.0 and there was a load of chromatic aberration on this side, on that reflective surface, there is no chromatic aberration here at all. And so that is a very impressive performance. The only thing I'm not crazy about here, and unfortunately it's extremely common with most lenses, and that is that as you move away from the center, um, that there is a kind of a uh, loss of circular shape of the bokeh highlights. And I would say in this case, the lens is pretty quick to deform those circular highlights. Even as you get right off center, we start to go towards that lemon shape. And obviously it's very pronounced here towards the edges. That's the only knock I would give here. Stopping down to f1.8, uh, we see there's a little bit better of the circular shapes along here. As we go in here, um, still a very, very clean. You can see there are a few uh, specks of dust inside the lens, um, but outside of that, uh, there's no business going on. That inner line is still uh, nice and soft there, and, and so a great performance. And, you know, already we had almost perfect resolution and contrast, so, uh, you know, just more of the same here. At F2, we see out towards the edges, the circular shapes on this side a little bit better, a little bit more in here. However, we do see already, we're starting to see the outline of the nine aperture blades just a little bit there. And, um, you know, our depth of field is starting to get down towards the bottom of the lens, not quite there yet. But overall, of course, still an amazing performance. F2.8 uh, here. Now we have a fairly good consistency of a uh, circles across frame. And while the aperture blades are showing up a little bit more here, I find that overall the circular shape is still actually quite good here for um, being stopped down now uh, two 
full stops. And uh, now our resolution is almost across the whole image. And I mean, if you look in this, this is just a medium JPEG here, but there is a really an incredible amount of detail um, in that. Now at F4, um, once again, now we have separation of all the highlights. Really, the um, the aperture shape is still staying quite round, and so uh, it started to show the aperture blades reasonably early by F2, but I think that it kind of holds its own as it moves on. And now, um, I mean, just a stunning amount of contrast and resolution across our whole main subject. And now at f5.6, um, just basically more of the same. You know, aperture blade shape is a little bit more pronounced, and now we're starting to see a bit of that inner line starting to emerge, but really this is still a, this is a great performance all around, and you couldn't ask for any more resolution than that. Now back to some real world uh, images. This is again, this is at f1.4, wide open, a high contrast scene here, obviously with, you know, the white snow, and uh, yet it's handled it very well. And if we zoom in here, this is the kind of image where a lesser lens falls apart. I mean, there is a tremendous amount of detail here to resolve. Not a, at this point in the scene, there's not a lot of natural contrast that's taking place there, but you'll find that all of these little branches are really finely rendered. You can see in the air uh, the little dots of snow that is falling. And throughout this image, it, you are very hard pressed to find chromatic aberrations. There's a bit of green fringing back here, um, but that's more because it's, it's out of focus. Um, but as we look in the plane of focus, up in this area where this should be, could be loaded with uh, purple fringing along these branches and the transition from the dark to the bright sky, they just, it isn't there. And in fact, I'm seeing almost no purple fringing from this lens at all. And so really that's a very impressive performance for a wide open at f1.4. Now, if we jump to the other end towards minimum focus, we see once again, there's a great amount of detail that's rendered here. In fact, you can see the actual shape of a snowflake here. Although this lens doesn't have great maximum magnification, and no 85 millimeter lens does. This only has a 0.12 times magnification, which is not really impressive at all. But we do see that the detail is resolving very nice, um, even at minimum focus. And once again, this is wide open f1.4. And, and once again, even even in this kind of a scene along these edges, we're not seeing much chromatic aberration at all. Just a tiny bit of green fringing, but that also could be removed in post very quickly should I try. It's very, very small and, you know, it's basically non-existent for field work. This is just to kind of show a rendering with, you know, kind of varying depths of field here. So obviously on our subject, we've got great detail there. Um, as we go along here, you know, there's no chromatic aberration along those. And then as we kind of drop away, away from the plane of focus, these branches, it just, you can see it's just a smooth, um, gradation towards the, the complete defocus, uh, no weirdness, no jitteriness there. Really the, uh, bokeh rendering, look at down in this area, these branches that could be hard edged or distracting. It's just all nice and soft. It's a great performance there. I wanted to share this image mainly for one purpose, just to show that at kind of medium distances, because of that, that strong contrast and great resolution, there's a very nice three-dimensional effect here on this uh, log that was kind of sticking out of the undergrowth. And you'll see there's vignette here, but um, great uh, sharpness where we need it to be and, and some nice three-dimensional pop to the image. Here's another uh, just out of camera JPEG. I just wanted to show once again the very nice uh, fall off to defocus. This is just a loaf of bread on the kitchen table. I mean, great detail in that plane of focus, but also extremely soft defocused region here. Here's another image that just shows off beautiful rendering. And um, this, once again, is an out of camera JPEG, and it just shows how nicely you can take a, a common object. This is at my father-in-law's house and they've got a beautiful a Chinese checker set out on a coffee table. And so anyway, I, I love that as a subject, I like uh, the way that it just captures light. So I was just using available light. You'll see that I was shooting ISO 1250 and a 100th of a second shutter speed. But you'll see here, great sharpness and that very narrow depth of field, and then great, just melting away to bokeh, and the overall color is extremely rich here. 
Now, this time of year, unfortunately, there's not a lot of uh, subjects to volunteer to do uh, portrait images. And so um, this particular, I did a couple of images here that I'll share that I, I did um, trying to shoot self-portraits because no one else was available at the time. Uh, talk about a challenge when you're shooting at f1.4 and uh, shooting using a manual focus lens. But anyway, I, I got some reasonable results. And while these aren't what I would shoot at at being perfect, um, it shows you know, pretty amazingly how much detail there is for portrait work at f1.4. There's far more resolution than what anybody really wants to see of their face and their pores. I would rather start with a very sharp image and then add selective softness if necessary. But here we see just right along everywhere, we've got just amazing uh, texture resolution here, um, you know, in the skin tones, great color here, um, you know, in the stubble here, just a tremendous amount of detail, even in just these little edges where there's textures of this uh, hood here, we've got a great amount of, of detail. And, and so it gives you an idea that as a portrait lens, this is going to give you uh, as much resolution as you could ever need wide open. Here's another that's just received a quick um, black and white um, preset applied to it and more just to, so here we have a little bit more blown highlights and shadows. That's an intentional part of the process. But again, it just shows you a great detail in the uh, areas that are in focus at, and this is at F2 to expand the plane of focus just a little bit here. So we're going to look at a couple of things in these images. Number one, we're looking at wide open resolution at infinity distance, which is a really, really challenging thing for a prime lens at wide aperture. And so we're going to see that this uh, lens, it passes that test with flying colors. But before we look at the corrected image, let's first look here. And so you can see also uh, how much vignette is here. And I would say that vignetting is one of the biggest kind of weaknesses. If there's an optical weakness to the lens, it is a, a fairly pronounced uh, vignette at wide apertures. And so you can see that here in the shading in the corners. Now I have applied the uh, correction here through Lightroom. That's the only real um, processing step here at all is just to add that um, Lightroom profile. And so that gets rid of the vignette and distortion. Although as you can see, the distortion factor is almost non-existent. Now this is really, really incredible to me that at, at the far shore where we're resolving these textures, you can see that this lens has no problem out resolving the sensor on the, uh, the Canon 6D that I'm using. I mean, here we are at the far left corner. I mean, no breaking down, no loss of resolution or haziness, but just amazing detail. As we move across the frame here, I mean, this is an incredible amount of resolution. This is f1.4. And look at the detail of the buildings on the far shore, all of the information in the mountains. Um, and then as we go to the far right corner of the frame, once again, detail is perfect right out to the corners. Now, uh, the very bottom of this may not be completely in focus, but really it, it looks quite exceptional. So here's the very bottom of the frame. Look at all these areas where the textures could fall apart, but we see that the texture um, resolution is really great. In this bottom left corner, I would say that there is just a little bit of a breakdown of softness that's coming in, but that's the only place that I can find fault at all. This is really just amazing, amazing amount of detail, amazing amount of resolution, and it shows off just how much of that Otis DNA has been imparted into the Milvus lens. This is at f1.8 and uh, has received a minor bit of post-processing, but more I just wanted to show off. Again, beautiful color rendition and uh, great detail. And, you know, I stopped down to f1.8 only to give a little bit more depth of field. You obviously could use a lot more in this image, but it shows off defocus on this crisp cold day. And uh, golfers have at it. There's the cart path there. Couple more images. Here's one of a cat. Just this is kind of just a general purpose. It goes to show that yes, you can uh, shoot this lens. This was just sh shot not using live view, but just using the EGS focus screen and and visually achieving focus and then using the conf the focus confirmation. Great detail here. I mean, just amazing. This was handheld and you know just a a natural light scene around the house. 
I got my wife to uh, pose for a couple of portrait shots outdoors. I just wanted to use it more as a, uh, you know, I would for a portrait lens. This is a terrible time of year for shooting portraits. It's February, it was freezing, and, uh, and so I, I moved quick for my wife's sake. But here we see at a full length distance, um, we've got great resolution um, everywhere that it matters. And so more than enough to work with for this type of image. And once again, even though this is far from the best kind of this is actually a very challenging type background. Just a lot of you know branches that can that could break down. There's just there's great resolution there. Here's another uh, one here. I won't linger here too long for my wife's sake, but uh, plen plenty of resolution that is achieved there. And uh, I really didn't have a problem um, nailing focus on these portraits, um, despite the cold, despite um, you know the conditions. Shooting at f 1.4, it really wasn't a problem. I think I, I noted one from the series of 20 or so portraits that um, the focus was uh, not satisfactory on, but I would imagine a fairly similar keeper rate for, um, you know, certainly when I shot the Sigma 85 millimeter f1.4, my keeper rate was no better than that and probably worse. And so anyway, I think that overall you certainly can use this as a portrait lens and get consistent results. I hope you enjoyed this examination of the real world image quality from the Zeiss Milvis 85mm f1.4. Obviously this is a superlative instrument when it comes to its optical performance and if you're not thrown by the reality of manual focus you will find that this is one of the highest resolving 85mm lenses in the world and um, it's just barely behind uh, the Zeiss Otis 85mm f1.4 which of course means that it's one of the most highly resolved um, SLR lenses period in the world. So when you begin to examine the price point at around $1,800 for the Milvis lens as compo compared to the $4,500 for the Otis lens, it becomes a real value when it comes to its optical performance. And in conclusion, the Milvis offers up a great blend between overall resolution but also beautiful bokeh and drawing from the lens. I hope this helps you in perhaps making your choice in your next 85 millimeter lens purchase. I'm Dustin Abbott. Please like, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Have a great day.